Okay guys, today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you my HP uh, laptop and the kind of services that I run on it and the way the system is set up. Now, it's a laptop. It's a 15-inch laptop and it's a Core i7 laptop. It's not one of the fanciest high-end laptops, but it runs very smooth and very fast. And the reason why is because I set this laptop up for my reasons. So I do some video editing on it and audio recording. So I have to run this laptop with nothing running whatsoever. I don't want anything running except the only things that I want. So we're going to go to the status here. And we're going to look at the things that are running on this laptop, on the Windows services. So the Windows services go from application information all the way down to Windows management. Uh, okay, I think it's instrument, if I believe, uh, instrumentation, yeah, that's it. Okay, that is it. Okay. So if you look at this list, it's pretty small. It's not very big. So, but you ask, we have a laptop. Is Wi-Fi on? No, I'm running Ethernet, so I don't need Wi-Fi. Uh, Bluetooth audio? No, I don't have any of those devices. So the only thing I have is a mouse. It's, it's actually a wired mouse that I have here, and Ethernet. And there's an audio jack here coming out that goes to speakers. That is exactly how I run this laptop. So that means that I can disable all this bullshit that's running here without any problems. Now, this laptop is also connected to a local LAN that I have. I'm not running a Windows server. Uh, it's, not, it's not on a Windows network domain. So I don't need any of those bullshit services to be running here. Now, people ask, well, what if you're running a Windows server environment? That's why these services are here. That's why Microsoft adds them, So you, because they're required. So in here, for example, Workstation, I'm not on a Windows domain, so I don't need it. Okay? Uh, Windows Search... I don't need that. So you have to look at yourself and the situation that you're in and what you really need to be running. If you want to run all these services enabled, that's fine. Your laptop is going to be slow as a dog, but all of them are running. So uh, look down here. Xbox? What? This is a laptop that does video and audio recording and video editing. It does not do any gaming. So that's why all these things are the same. Windows update, I'll update when I want to. Okay. Uh, Windows update metric service, I'll run that when I want to. That's why it's set to manual. Now, this is an important one here, WN. If you're on a laptop, run this. If you are constantly moving the laptop around, going from house to house, because it has to be on for the wireless uh, signal to, to work, for your wireless network card. Now, the DHCP service is an interesting one here. In Windows XP, if you remember that bar, uh, we, could, we could disable it without affecting anything else. We can't do that anymore. Uh, starting with Windows 7, there is uh, two services that it runs, and it's the Network List Service, Network Location Awareness. Now, this is for the wireless signals, the uh, networks that are available, so it keeps a list on the side here when you go down here. Okay, right now you notice that we're running Ethernet, so I won't show you. But anyways, I'll show you the wireless uh, AP points. But that's important to run here, okay, because uh, you won't be able to see them. Just to let you know, you won't be able to see the list. But aside from that, there is no necessity, and I'm going to sh show you the disabled ones because it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Look at all the disabled ones. Okay, so like I said, Run what you need, don't run what you don't need. Okay, so because of the Wi Fi, because I can turn the Wi Fi signal all the time, and because the ETP is running, because I don't want to mess with that one. Because again, Wi Fi, if I take my laptop to a friend's house, I have to enable uh, not only the ETP, but also the Wi Fi signal. In this case, I only have to disable the WDN service. That's it at the bottom, the one I showed you before. Um, this one's an important one. It's the Apple Mobile Device Service, and this is the one that you, when uh, you install the, uh, if you want to connect a an iPhone to your desktop to see it and you know take stuff off the internal storage space, you need this service on. But I don't have it running all the time. It's the only one I need to. Okay, so as you can see, this is what I run, and that's it. So I uh, if if you uh, add 
all these servers together, it's 200 plus services. It's it's a nightmare. I mean, if you go from here, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 10 already there. And we're only at the bottom. So I think it was over 300, I believe, 320 services, somewhere around there, that Windows has. Really. And this is the biggest problem with Windows. It, it tries to cover all these things. And then you ask it, okay, I'm going to do video editing on today on the, on the laptop. Can Windows configure itself for this profile? Well, that's why I set this up for, for that reason. I am not going to be running Windows Domain Server. I'm not running remote network connections. I'm not doing any of that nonsense. I have applications that can do that. So you have to start asking yourself, what are you using really Windows for? Is it for everyday general use? I'll leave everything running. If you're doing a lot of video editing mixed with audio, going online, browsing a little bit of YouTube, um, you don't need any, and I mean any, of all the other services running. They're not needed. So I don't know what to tell you here, but if you're running services, they should be for a good reason. For example, I'm going to... Uh, go to some services here that are important. Uh, they're VMware services. I'm running VMware Workstation here. And I'm going to go down to here so I can show you. Now, even though I have the application here running, and I've run it sometimes, it has two um, old OSs virtualized, notice that I have it disabled. Okay? Because I am not running them. So this one runs, the VMware authorization service runs the actual license for it. The VMware USB, it will disable USB uh, in, in the server portion of it. So uh, I can disable it, just leave all of them, and uh, just leave all of them disabled for now, and just enable them whenever I want to. I know where they are. I, I, if it gives me an error, I know what it is. So for most people, they say, oh, my God, what kind of error is that? I know what it is. So if, I'm running, if I run VMware, it's going to give me an error. The license uh, server is not running. So I know already. But anyways, the biggest thing here with this is ask yourself what are you running Windows for okay what are you doing with it if you don't care you're not doing uh, video editing audio editing that needs like tight timing and no no clicks and pops then you don't have to worry about this stuff but if you're doing graphics uh, 3d graphics with Maya or 3d max something like that then ask yourself why is all this bullshit running that you don't need okay you don't need all this nonsense it's time to ask yourself what you're running Windows for. And this is where, to me, Linux... Okay, I also have a couple of Linux uh, desktops here. Um, configured as multi-boot with Windows. That's why Linux doesn't have these problems. Because Linux itself, yes, it runs services. Okay, it has default services. But not, for God's sake, not 300 services. Okay? It doesn't run, it doesn't run all these servers, and you have to really see the list of all the stuff that's running by default. When you install Windows the first time, this is, you're not going to see this like this. Almost all of them are running. It's it's absolutely mind-boggling how many are running. So, to me, okay, personally, the problem with Windows and the perception of Windows being slow is this screen right here. It's the service that you have to disable all this nonsense and only leave what it is essential to you. So. DHCP, like I said before, I'm running um, a, an Ethernet, and it's I run a, my own uh, IP scheme. Uh, so I still leave it running because with Wi-Fi, if I take the laptop somewhere else, I want DHCP running to run. That way, when I get there, it gets me an IP automatically, right? I don't have to go in there and change it manually because their network infrastructure might be different. So if I'm running 192.168.5.1, um, they might be running their uh, 192.168.1.1 one scheme so then I, my IP won't work right okay so that's my laptop here and this is a 15 inch uh, HP laptop with a core i7 uh, processor not very high-end very old already but it runs super smooth it runs quiet the fan barely runs on this thing even when I'm doing video editing here uh, especially with browsing uh, you know typing word processing th the fan doesn't even turn on okay uh, Netflix nothing no fan turning on. Uh, only when I'm doing some video rendering for like 10, 15 minutes that it, the fan actually kicks in to cool the, uh, the GPU. Uh, anyways, 
that's my list here. If you, I can't go through every single damn service, but you can tell what each service is. Update manually. Windows search. I have it disabled. Uh, look at this thing. Windows Media. Oh God's sake. Windows Media Player Network Sharing Service. You rerun and run this shit. Like, come on, people. All these bogus services. It's just mind-boggling. Anyways, that's my list here. Check yours and uh, and leave a comment. Thanks for for watching this video, and I hope that this gives you some insight on why Windows feels sluggish. It feels slow sometimes. Well, that's because all this junk is running. And one of the biggest ones for the uh, right-click response is the window search, the, the fetching. Uh, disable this. Gives you some, some uh, better GUI uh, interaction speed. Thanks for watching, and take care.